a personal possession frozen in the ground. It's troubling and tangible evidence of the housing realities. Some folks feel they are forced to choose this kind of illegal way of living in the elements, in an encampment. When I first attended, uh, we found a little bit of debris at the end of 50th Avenue, but once we proceeded on foot through some brush and a, and a fence, we found the encampment was surprisingly large. Multiple 911 reports of people being threatened with guns, hammers and axes triggered the police investigation in December, but didn't notice the encampment, an indication how well hidden it was. Patrol officers did attend the scenes, but were unable to find any of the uh, participants in those disturbances, no victims, no witnesses. And as such, those investigations were closed at that point in time. In January, police returned to the site and uncovered a large plywood structure and a bridge crossing the Forest Lawn Creek. They say about six people were living there and were dumping waste into the creek. Police gave them 30 days to pack up and leave. When that time was up, a crew came in to dismantle the site. At that time, we queried the names of the individuals we located, ar arrested two people on outstanding warrants, and laid charges under the Public Lands Act on all four occupants under the uh, of the encampment at that time. The Calgary Community Standards Encampment Team and Alpha House were also there to help. To make sure that the folks in that encampment did have supports related to, you know, basic needs supplies, um, housing referrals, mental health care, um, just so that when their tents were dismantled, they did have other services or other access points in terms of the support that they needed. However, Bruvel says one of the biggest concerns is beyond the encampment itself, but its size. So we do our best to reduce displacement where possible for camps. But what we do know is that larger camps with more in individuals involved does lead more to uh, exploitation, criminal activity. The individuals have been provided with all the supports that they need. And so it was definitely something that was um, an engagement between our outreach team and the people that were in that encampment. So it didn't happen unexpectedly. Now, again, crews have already cleaned up about 200 cubic yards of material from this area. However, because the ground is still pretty frozen, they'll have to return sometime in the spring to clean up the rest of the garbage that's on the ground. The cost of the total cleanup is expected to surpass $16,000.